Hey guys, I'm Mark, and today we are at Valley View Farms in Cockeysville, Maryland. Uh, Valley View is a renowned nursery in this area. It's located just north of Baltimore, and they have uh, probably the largest selection of house plants that I know of in the area. Uh, here with me is my friend Carrie. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing well. Good. Uh, Carrie, she works at Valley View and has for a lot of years. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's also a really well-known and well-respected figure in the plant community in Maryland, uh, especially the Baltimore area. If you're from Baltimore, uh, you might recognize her from TV. She does Sunday Gardener on WBAL and also some other things during the week with some question and answer stuff with them. Uh, Carrie's been nice enough to talk with us today about houseplants, which is great because I personally don't know a lot about houseplants at all. But uh, I did my research and All right. <laughs> I talked to some friends and we came up with a list of some frequently, frequently asked questions, uh, but it's a lot to cover. So Carrie and I thought we would break this conversation up into three parts, uh, three videos. So that way it'd be a little bit easier to digest, a little more organized. Uh, this part is going to be about uh, maybe a little bit of intro about houseplants and then uh, we want to primarily focus on some of the house plants that are like the really tough ones, the really hard to kill ones. Like, uh, like if you know somebody that says something like, I would kill a cactus or, uh, <laughs> you know, like, um, I travel too much. Right. Or, uh, um, you know, I just don't need anything else to take care of. These are going to be the kinds of plants uh, that will hopefully change that perspective. I think a lot of it too, it just gives people confidence because they want to try plants, but they're afraid of killing plants. So if we can show them some easy ones to start off with, then they'll broaden. Just get the foot in the door. Yeah, exactly. Get started. You know, with gardening, that's like sometimes the hardest step is just to, just to take that first, uh, first groundbreaking thing. Um, well, before we talk plants, do you want to um, introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are and maybe well, like a little bit Mark about said, value. We, we've known um, the folks that he's worked with for 30 years or so, and we've all loved plants. We And more than that, I think me personally, I love the people who love plants. I love the passion they bring to it. Um, so talking about house plants now that it's kind of the hot thing and millennials seem to be going towards that, uh, we've really tried to bring in a better a spread, I guess, a better supply of house plants this time of year, sure. but we've done very well with it. And customer, I mean, last week you would have come here and our house plant was about empty. So we were able to fill this week and get everything back on track. Okay. It's, we certainly have a, quite a bit of stuff around. It's very impressive. Um, well, where would you like to start? You want to um, well, talk about some succulents? or Yeah, succulents would be great. Okay. Uh, what? I know there's like a huge succulent craze going on, like you said, with the millennials and things. Right. Um, so what do you think is, uh, makes them so popular right now? Or do you I have any thoughts about that? I think a lot of it is their ease of care, or at least that the per perspective that they're easy to care of, the perception that they're easy okay. to care for. Um, so most people don't have to water them quite as much. If they're in a dorm, maybe they're not gonna have to worry about this and put them on a weekly schedule like they think they do their other plants. I mean, you can just go up to these guys, take your finger, stick it way down in there, and if it's really dry, give it a shot of water. Um, okay. so, so I think it's easier for people. They grow slow enough that they can repot them, but they don't have to repot them. And the other thing is just the ones that we have selected here. I mean, they go great together. You see different forms, different textures. Yeah. Some of them flower. Definitely. And, you know, and there, a lot of them are self-propagating, so it's easy to keep them going. Well, you can see this, uh, this little aloe right here. That's the aloe, right? Right. This has a little baby you can see coming right off the side. Um, I know you might be able to see that on this way, but, uh. I guess you could snip that out of there and you could put it in a new pot and then you'd have a new plant that you could uh, give to somebody. Well, you probably know people like I do that had one of the old aloe veras and mm. it just gets babies and pups yep. and keeps on going. So yep. some of these plants are really easy to grow like that and I think give you some satisfaction. This one looks like it'll grow a little slower than the typical like aloe vera that right. you keep in your bathroom something. Um, okay. <clears throat> well, a lot of people ask me um, or I've heard people talk about air quality, like plants that clean the air. Uh, do you know anything about that? Yeah, there were some studies done by NASA um, to get clean air into the space station, really, to get some recirculating air. And they did find that plants and soil, actually, in the plants, help clean that air out um, and, and removed a lot of things like benzene and formaldehyde um, and different toxins that we bring into our homes in the form of paint, carpeting, that sort of thing. Okay. So Dr. Wolverton wrote a book called um, How to Grow Fresh Air. 
and he takes like 50 of the plants that are the best at removing some of those toxins from the air and he, and he talks about them. So one of the best ones he has in there is uh, anthurium. It just takes out a boatload of different plants and we'll talk about that maybe next week with that particular plant. Okay, sure. Or sure. next time, excuse me. Are these um, some just easy care ones or? Yeah, some most of these, of these are, are easy care and some of these also showed up in his top 10 list. So okay. spider plant, I think we all know. And this is another one that propagates sure easily and keeps going that one's got a lot longer leaves than like that we have a spider plant that we sell at the nursery and put yeah. a lot of we put it in a lot of annual combinations but the leaves aren't quite as long as that one so yeah, these are long and it's a reverse so usually you'll see the green on the outside and the white on the inside yeah so you can have a lot You're of right. different things like that okay. yeah and same goes with the pothos this one is marble queen so it has a lot of the white marbling you can also get the golden pothos there's one called the jade pothos and then there's one called neon it's a real bright green and those are easy to grow uh, spathophyllum or peace lily. So this is easy, but it's not. What's easy about it is when it needs water, it wilts. So you know it needs water. Okay. If you do it too often, the plant quality is not going to retain. But um, it is good for low light and it gets a little white flower on it. So a lot of people like this. Okay. So a rule of thumb for that one is just um, let it dry out more so than just keeping it wet. Is yeah, that... and, you'll, and you'll learn just as you, you know, as you would repot plants or anything, some plants have a pretty hefty root system. Uh -huh. the, the peace lilies almost always do, um, so they can grow out of a pot probably within a season and need to be repotted. Okay. But other than that, they're pretty easy care. Um, what, what about the pothos? I want to go back to that one again. Okay. Is that pothos, right? That's what yep. you called that. Uh-huh. Uh, is, is that a type of philodendron? Isn't that a type of philodendron? It's, it's related. So, I mean, a philodendron is a different plant, but this is Scindapsis, I think, is the actual name of it. Okay. But um, it does very, very well in a lot of different combinations. What you'll see, like this has a nice compact growth habit. Okay. So if you have a fair amount of light, it's gonna continue that. If you have a little bit less light, it's gonna to tend to reach. So you'll end up having these vines really oh, go okay. out. Oh, okay. Like if you have it on top of your kitchen cabinets or something. Yeah, like I mean, I've you can people, train them. Then they'll kind of like come out like Christmas lights almost. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. But do some of them grow um, like larger than others? Um, in terms of the different types, are they all pretty much consistent in their grow habit? I mean, it, they're, they're relatively the same. There's a group that we carry now and then called Hawaiian pothos, and the leaves are bigger. But other than that, okay. they have the, really the same growing habit. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, these would probably make a th great thing, too, that you say you could propagate. Could, would they, you know, if you have like a longer cutting, will they take root? I mean, it seems like it might. Yeah, and one of the easiest ways to do that is, again, you have that on your kitchen cabinet or mantle. Uh -huh. So where you have the breaks in the leaf and you start to, you know, where, where you have a little bit of a node there, uh -huh. you can just get a pot up there, plant it in the pot while it's still connected to the mother plant, I want to say, and it'll root in. And it'll send down roots yeah. just by virtue of laying on that new soil. Exactly. Okay. Just sort of a, almost like That's, air layering. That, that'd be a really easy way to do it. Yeah, man. All right. Uh, th then this is probably one of the easiest plants for a beginner. This is ZZ, okay. ZZ palm or ZZ plant, Zamia, something, Zamifolia. Um, it, it, but it's, it's bulletproof. And you look in here and the roots have almost like these big knots on them. Yeah, so I can see it. It'll control the water. Like a, like a big, um, I don't know if you can ever pick that up. That's like a big, uh, like a nut on the, well, yeah, not a nut. Yeah, it's very which, similar. But that holds water? Yeah, I mean, you, you see them on like the asparagus ferns, you know, you go back into yeah. those roots. and uh, So this is similar to that, has those really big uh, things that'll hold water and, and stuff on them. So you could forget, forget about it for a while right. and you'd just be fine. Yep. Okay. So little known fact, Mark, my maiden name is Fern. All is right. it? <laughs> yep. Really? So I grew up as a fern, got married, didn't take my name back later, oh well. But anyway, <laughs> there, most ferns really are a little finicky because they need humidity and they need uh -huh. a fair amount of water. The bird's okay. nest fern, though, is one of the easier ones to grow. Okay. So if you wanted to start with a fern, I'd go with one like this. It does get a little bit bigger. There are some of these roughly sides, others that a little almost like more like a snake plant where they have a real smooth leaf, but they really are nice to get going. Keep yeah, it's, going. it's very pretty. Yeah. Could you put that in a hanging basket or something too? You or could. It's not going to hang like the other ferns would. Okay. But but it, you know you can certainly put it at like this level where you're going to see those leaves just fall over the side of the pot. What about light for this one? It's going to handle moderate light. Um, it'll do a little bit better in bright light. Okay. Yeah. And, is, that, and, is that kind of generally the rule of thumb? Like, uh, like, do most plants prefer a little bit more light if you can give it to them? Or well, I, I, I use our greenhouses kind of as examples. They all seem to do great in here, whether they're getting a lot of sun with some shade or whatever. So they is. seem to like that, but they can acclimate to lower light. So okay. when we get our plants from Florida, we like to make sure they've been grown in a shade house versus out in the outside without any shade or anything on it. So sure. we okay. ask for that for things like this and 
aglaonemas and some of the plants that we know that like lower light. We want to make sure that they're getting that so when they come up here, they don't just... They don't start to change. Exactly. They're used to being out in the bright sun, you get them in the shade and then they start to change a little bit. That yep. makes sense. Yeah, a little less transplant shock. Okay. Um, well, you want to go to some of the ones on yeah, your side? Yeah, let's talk okay. about... So you said snake plant. Is yep. that, that's what this is, isn't that's it? That's what that is. Okay. A lot of cool varieties and that's another in plant. So you come in here, you can find all sorts of uh, tall ones like that that'll get you know up here maybe yeah. as tall as you are but you can also get little bird's nest types of snake plants that stay okay. nice and short. I didn't see any of those. I, well I was looking at um, when I was looking up some of these questions I saw a lot of these. Mm -hmm. People were doing um, stuff with like uh, put them in a tall baskets or um, you, know, you could put them in a corner somewhere because they'll stay tall and narrow sort of. Well we were talking um, a little bit before about the, these as, as deck as decor. Okay. So house plants are certainly great because we just all like to grow plants. But some of this can add a nice architectural touch with the right pot sure, and, yeah. and really help out yeah, know, a create lot of the, a nice spot. There's a lot of really modern looking stuff yeah. I saw it with. It really looked pretty neat. Okay. Um, what about, well, what about water for this one? Is this um, like it pretty dry or? Well, my friend who is a, a much gar better gardener than I am, Jan. She came to my house once and she said, you know, I've never seen a snake plant in wilt. Um, but yeah. so generally they won't go into wilt. Yeah, it, um, well, they're so hard. Like they the really are. are pretty. But um, I just, you know, it's, it, this is one of the plants I kind of water when I think about it. You know, it might get it once a month. Sure. Um, if it's the summertime and I have it outside, I might have to hit it every week or so. But just check it regularly. The other thing with snake plants is they do, grow out and a lot of times in the bigger pots you'll see them like bust out of the side of the pot okay. just because they keep sending up another shoot okay um so watch that on these but they're a lot of fun to grow they're easy to grow and somebody somewhere did a study and said they're they help with sleeping i don't understand it sleeping. at all but they help with sleeping okay i'm not gonna have one of those mm -mm. <laughs> okay um well what are some of the what's this one right here uh, that's Dracaena. That one's called Kiwi. That's a Dracaena. That's yeah. a Dracaena. Oh, okay. And the Dracaenas in general are pretty easy to care for. This is a thin leaf Dracaena. You uh -huh. might be used to the larger corn plants yeah. that have larger leaves on them. And I just think they're pretty easy. Now, if I did forget to water this for a couple of weeks and it would kind of wilt down for me. It would I let might, you know a little bit. It lets you know, but I'd also lose some of these bottom leaves. But that's not a big deal because then you get to see more of that stem and more of that you, trunk. Yeah, the trunk sort of develops. It kind yeah. of looks like a, like a, um, almost like a Pine cone, I don't know how you describe that. But, yeah, but uh, it has nice, nice layering in there, and then you can get branching. You can notch this and get secondary branching off of this. Um, but they're fun to grow, and some of these dracaenas will easily get six, seven feet tall. Wow. Will this stem get any taller? Like, as it grows, or will it kind of stay there and go it's into gonna three? It's going to kind of go from there. So you might get a little bit, but most of the growth is going to be in most the other the, stems. It's, so it's going to turn to three. You can see there's three pieces here. Yep. It's going to turn to three and go out that way. That's pretty neat. And if you get into trouble, you can always like air layer it to bring it back down or just enjoy it. I mean, I, I had a sister that had one grow to eight feet in her dorm and then uh -huh. it started going across the ceiling when it ran out of, ran out of space. So air layering, is that where you, you take uh, like, from my understanding, that's when you take like peat moss or something. Yeah, damp, you would, and you wrap it around the stem, surround wrap or something. Exactly. Or? So we used to, like the old Diffenbach is we used to have before your time, um, but they don't get no leaves at the bottom. You could cut into that main trunk uh, uh -huh. about two thirds of the way and make a little pie wedge in there. Okay. Put a little bit of root tone or some kind of rooting hormone on there. Uh -huh. Then like you said, take some wet sphagnum moss okay. and wrap it up. And after six to eight weeks, you're gonna have a new plant. You can just chop it off. You've got the roots ready to go. That's awesome. Yep. I didn't know you, you know, I never thought to do this with house plants. I've heard of people doing it with like crepe myrtles and things like that. Yeah, same thing. Okay. All right, well. What else do we have here? Well, I love the philodendrons. So that's one of the clump forming philodendrons. A lot yeah. of the philodendron are, are hanging one, right? types. Yeah, but that's a clump type. <laughs> okay. And it's going to grow like that. Now, I have one at home and I immediately put into a larger pot. I set it out in the shade this summer and it probably tripled in size. So, so okay. be aware of that. Okay. It is, a, it is a plant too that if I have inside, I would tend to turn a little bit because uh -huh. it will grow. It has that what they call phototropism. So it's going to grow towards light. So okay. just turn it so you don't end up with one one side out of whack from just, the others. Just kind of keep it rotating. Yeah. Okay. Every week or two, just give it a little turn. Well, that makes sense. I love the color of that. It's like a rusty, like a, like a neat burnt orange, almost sort of reddish to it. Yeah, there are various orange ones. There's some yellow ones. There's a red cardinal or black cardinal too. So all sorts of different color leaves. And then of course the philodendron that's been so popular lately is the monstera. Yeah. And that's, I want to say it's almost like a clump forming vine. So it's going to grow upright. Uh, you've been to Longwood Gardens, you go into yeah. the one house and it, they have one that's absolutely humongous and beautiful. So that's kind of the, one of the hot plants right now. Okay. Can you keep it small? I mean, it, it, does it? 
You can keep cutting it back. Yeah. Yeah. You no know, problem. And again, you can take, you can root some of those cuttings and start some new ones. And just start, you know, yep. bumping it down. Okay. All right. Well, what else do we have here? Let's see. Up, up front here, we have Diffenbachia. This is going to be a uh, yep, relatively easy to care plant. So things that have changed since since I started here many years ago is a lot of these now are developed through tissue culture. So they end up having a much healthier solid plant and it's grown virus free and that sort okay. of thing. So they're they're much better than they used to be. Now the other fun, the nickname for this plant is dumb cane. Dumb cane? Dumb cane, yep. So I had a smart aleck uh, co-worker that took a piece of that and ate it and he couldn't talk for about three or four days. I wouldn't really? recommend that to anybody because they're couldn't. toxic but it does numb the vocal cords. Oh wow. So you want to be careful. With Three what? or four days, he couldn't talk. <laughs> he couldn't talk. Just for chewing on a leaf for <laughs> that's this. Right. That's okay. Don't try it. Don't try yeah. this. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's interesting to know. So some of these probably you probably want to be a little careful having around pets, maybe. Yeah, and I'm usually going to say you should be careful with all of them. I mean, it's just like not knowing people's allergies. Not knowing you know, people's allergies. You can get into trouble. So if you start with a house plant, just do a do your little bit of research and just make sure see what you're dealing with. Yeah, different bacchias, uh, philodendron. Okay. Um, and a lot of these other plants do are, are toxic to animals, um, but I won't say that other things aren't because I don't know what these growers have put on them in the in way of systemic insecticides or anything before right. we get them. Right. Um, so we just don't recommend that you let your plants, your, your plants and pets play Fair with each other. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what else we got? Let's see. So we were talking about orchids uh, okay. not too long ago and orchids yeah. are relatively easy. Uh, but I think you have to have some expectations for them. They're going to bloom for you for a while, uh -huh. then they're going to stop, uh -huh. then you may or may not have to repot them, but they still give you a lot of, I mean, you think about what you go out and pay for dinner or for a nice bottle of wine, and you're sure. going to get an orchid that's going to last months. Well, um, you know, also like, instead of like fresh flowers, like you're going to get a fr bouquet of flesh, fresh flowers that only right. lasts for a few days. Well, this will, you know, give you a few weeks, a couple yep. weeks at least. And there are different ways you can keep it going. We have a guy here, Eric, that does a great job with orchids, but he's great with repotting them and cutting them back so they get them to rebloom. Um, and just to go over with people what they need to get them going. Usually with orchids, while most of these plants are planted in soil, we've talked uh -huh. about that, orchids are usually planted in a bark mixture. Because yeah. they're what we call epiphytes. So in nature, like tillandsias, they kind of grow like in the crotches of trees without soil. Uh -huh. Um, and then just take off there. So you have to be careful not to keep them too wet in that and just have something that's in excellent drainage. And yeah, so when it comes out of that pot, that's why we go with this type of pot too, because it gives it more air. That's okay. So the holes in there, they're not just decorative. It no. also keeps a really good airflow around the plant. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of like bark. It's like, uh, is that like pine bark? It's, uh, it's usually so, like a tree fern bark or something along those lines, sometimes cedar. They use different barks, Okay. depending on where they're coming from. This is usually a pretty special mix just for orchids. Yeah, and, and that's what I would always suggest is do get a specific orchid mix when you go to repot instead of sticking with a regular potting soil. Um, do you, when it comes to like fertilizing, um, do you recommend like a certain type of fertilizer for orchids or like a water soluble fertilizer or I, I do, coat or yeah there, no i like the water soluble there's some good ones from a company called like better grow uh, if you're familiar with the jacks classic you can um, buy orchid foods for that and usually when they're not growing they're very high nitrogen but when you get them to start to bloom you want something higher phosphorus that's going to work on getting that bloom going oh okay like most so, of your so change it up when it's in a little bit of a different stage exactly exactly okay. and okay. with a lot of these plants you know these can kind of go dormant in the winter time and yeah. you don't really have to do a lot with them from like November to March. But then about March, as the days get longer, that's the time to repot, to think about feeding them again and all that sort of thing. That, that's when they're going to start waking up again and putting on new growth and new roots. And, exactly. And then you kind of want to fertilize along with that. Right. Give them their uh, energy boost when they feel like <laughs> being energetic <laughs> instead of like when they're sleeping. Like that athlete going out there, you want to make sure he's hydrated and he's had right. plenty to eat before he goes out there. There's no sense in giving him a Gatorade in the middle of the night when he's sleeping. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. All right. So I know you like the crown of thorns, but I, you probably know more about that from. Well, I like this one a lot. I recognize this. Um, my mother has one of these. She has a very, very dry house. Uh, she's got forced air, heat, and um, she just has. She's just had some issues with uh, with keeping certain types of plants alive or blooming, uh, especially. But she's got one of these in white, and um, she's had it about four years now, and it's just constantly in bloom, all the time. It loves her house. In fact. When she puts it out on the back porch, like in the summertime, yeah, it it'll actually stop blooming. It likes it better in the <laughs> in the in the uh, drier house. Um, but that, she loves it. I love it. It's a it's a wonderful plant. 
that way. Yeah, there's a lot of new cultivars and colors out now that we're able to get from our, uh, our yeah, succulent see, growers. This so. one's a pretty wild red. Yeah. Is this a euphorbia? Is that right? It is euphorbia family, and you can usually tell euphorbia if you take, take a little leaf off of there somewhere, and you'll see the white milky juice there. Oh, it got like latex? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, okay, the, we have latex that, I mean, we have uh, euphorbia that we use as an annual type, and it does when you when you break it. It gets like a, that's well, starting to go. Yeah. There's a little bead of it there. And what, anyway. what's the, the plant we all sell the most of, unfortunately? Uh, what The single potted plant we sell the most is a euphorbia. Yeah. And that's the poinsettia. Okay, really? So it's the same, you know, yeah, that's also euphorbia, and you'll see the same thing. I mean, if you yeah, mess with them you, a lot, you end up with latex all over you. Sure. So same kind of thing. And like you said, there's perennials and even some annuals out there. Right. That are euphorbia. And uh, latex can sort of be just an irritant in general. I'll yeah. just throw that in there. Sometimes, like you say, if it gets on you, make sure yes. you wash your hands if you're dealing with them. Don't touch your eyes. I, I, guess, I, 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 I said, yes, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went, had to go to the eye clinic. Seems <laughs> like everybody, everybody in gardening has to learn things the hard way. That's right. Just, learn which plants to kind of yeah. stay away, you know, be careful around. <laughs> oh, that's sort of the fun part too. Okay. Well, that kind of gets us through some of the basics, I guess. All you right, have, cool. You have a book here. Um, this is my, yeah, this is my favorite book. It's been around forever. I've got to find my page that I like that I had marked. I wonder what I did with it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this is by D.G. Hessian, um, the houseplant expert. He also has a flowering houseplant book. Not as much a fan of it, but this is great. And okay. he has drawings and everything of most of the plants and their care. And he goes over even bonsai and bromeliads and ferns and oh, wow. he'll yeah, have- It's all illustrated too. And it is. And, and he's got a and lot of- It's all of, alphabetical in there too. Is, yep. that, is that how it's set up? So really easy to care for. But what I love about this book is in the very first couple of pages, page four, 10 golden rules of houseplants. Don't drown them. We know that's what sure. happens to people. They just don't, they give them enough, give them a rest. We talked about that for the winter time. Uh -huh. Give them a little shot. Well, going back to don't drown them, it reminds me of something I wanted to, um, and you said poinsettias. A lot right. of times, like when you have, you buy things that have the, uh, like the decorative aluminum foil exactly, on them. Exactly, yeah. I've, that is, you gotta be careful with that because it, <laughs> it traps sure. all the water. It doesn't let any of the water out. Right. So then you go to, why is my poinsettia, you know, is it dry? And then you try to lift it up and it weighs like 10 pounds because it's soaking wet. And you look at your grower's pots, you, you guys grow poinsettias in or whatever, and you take mm -hmm. a look at the bottom of them. And I mean, they have all sorts of holes for the excess water to get right. out. And then we trap them in that foil or sometimes in like a cash po in, in just a pot. So when you do pot your plants, make sure you either take them out to water them, don't let them sit in water, yeah. or that they have good drainage. Yeah, because sometimes, it, you know, if you have like that inch or two of water at the bottom of the pot, you, you'd never know. It looks, exactly. dry, it looks dry on top, but, you know, if you have that, you know, puddle at the bottom and the roots are sitting you in know, there, for that, sure. can, that can cause a lot of problems <laughs> with a lot of plants. No, you're absolutely right. So okay. give them extra humidity. Most of the plants, other than the succulents we talked about, are tropical plants. Um, and what I found is when I did add a humidifier in my room, I felt a lot better too. So it made yeah. sense. I need one for my that. office. My office is way too dry. <laughs> the other thing is treat problems promptly. So if you're going through a greenhouse and if I see mealybugs, sometimes I can take that leaf off, end of problem. If yeah. that goes on and on, then I either have to treat it or get rid of the plant. So, but if you see that right away, you can usually take care of it. Okay. And you can do it. Pr uh, the other thing is to group them together. Again, they all like humidity, so they're like kind of hanging out together. Okay. Learn to repot. Um, when this piece of leaf starts to decline, you know that those roots are pretty full. Learn how to just do that. Choose wisely, and we'll talk about more about that about sure. light, lights and all that. Um, and here's one of my favorites, except the loss of temporary plants. I love cyclamen. I think they're beautiful. We have some up in front of the store. So and they, and they, they bloom beautifully from November to March. And by about July, eh. A lot of people uh, call this the, that's the upside down flower, right? Some great, call great. It. Yeah, they are really pretty. And I feel the same way about poinsettias. I want to get whatever's new next year. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to compost this year's, um, you know, once it starts to get dusty in my kitchen or whatever. Yeah. So do accept some of that. And, yeah. and again, they've lasted a long time. Uh, we bring in bulbs that we force in the spring. You can take those out and replant them outside later. So there's all sorts of things you can do with them. Yeah, but it, you know, also just don't be afraid to kill something too. Exactly. You know, that's part of the whole process is, you know. And, and they can, they are compost, compostable, so you can put them out in the compost yep. pile and yep. they're good. Yeah, you know, bring something else new in. Yeah. All right. I will say my aloe, in my really, really dry office, my aloe loves it. Yeah, I have a aloe hedgehog at home and the same thing. I just, yeah. it does, it loves it. And I don't really hardly get any natural light in there either. I do, I've got two like really um, bright LED lights in my okay. office, like overhead, like they're replacement fluorescent lights that you'd have in an office building. But that's, that's all I have in there. And uh, it's just flourishing. It's been there like a year and a half. 
No, that's wonderful. It's great so. that they keep on going. And, and yeah, you find you find the right plants in the right place sometimes by accident in your house. So yeah, experiment a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, I think that's a good place to uh, to start with. Okay. Um, you know, get get your feet wet, get your foot in the door, and uh, you know, um, either either have a good idea for something to send to somebody. That's that's a new. Uh, uh, house plant carer for her, or uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Term. Or even, uh, <laughs> you know, it, like even somebody like me or you. I mean, to put one of these somewhere in your house where you just can kind of, it doesn't take a lot of thought, you know, just to revisit it every once in a while. And it's like Christmas cactus. I like plants that thrive on benign neglect. That I can yes. go and hey, look, you're doing all right without right. me. That's, right, that's it's, cool. You know, you can you can live here just fine. I don't have to you know work around you too much. Exactly. Well, that's good. Well, I think we'll um we'll we'll end this episode there. Uh, Next, next video, we're going to do, I guess, a little bit more into detail about picking out the right plant for the right spot. Okay. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of different home environments. Like sure. we were talking about dry houses, a lot of light, low light. Um, so we'll get a little bit more into that with the next one. Um, but for now, uh, I hope you liked our video. <laughs> uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you.